Hello everyone and welcome to another tutorial Thursday. It feels great. It's Thursday. And today for this week we're going to be going over F-Tilt. Everyone has been requesting this. So F-Tilt obviously one of Snake's best tilts, arguably. Uh, so let's go ahead, let's dive right into it and let's go over how to use Snake's F-Tilt. And so as usual, we're going to be going over the frame data of Snake's F-Tilt. And what better way to start off by naming the F-Tilt. So of course, what you want to do is what well, what we normally do is we call Snake Snake's F-Tilt by F-Tilt 1 and F-Tilt 2. So just as a reference for you guys. So we're going to start with F-Tilt 1. It's a four, four frame startup, so that's really, really good. Minus 22 on shield though, so it's not super safe on shield. Uh, and it's active for four to five frames, so that's active for two frames. It doesn't have a weak hit or anything like that, as you can see in the hitbox here. It's just red. Uh, 31 total frames, 4% base damage, and all that other stuff. So you can take a look at that. Nine frame shield, shield lag, five frame shield stun. Now you can take a look at the hitbox here. And the hitbox covers pretty much his leg. And it's not going to cover above snake or behind snake or anything like that just pretty much in front of them uh it's a pretty good amount of like range it covers because it covers like a little bit above them and of course all around the leg but it doesn't have like a disjoint or anything like that so definitely keep that in mind now we're going to move on to f tilt 2 and f tilt 2 is an eight frame startup again almost the same thing minus 22 on shield minus 21 if you get like the the really far hit and it's active on frame eight so it's only active for one frame and then of course you can see down here base damage so base damage is really all dependent on how you space the f tilt because if you want max damage what you want to do is get the tip of f tilt one and then you wait a little bit and then do the second hit of f tilt two to get as much damage as possible and that's going to be 18 percent otherwise if you do it normally you're going to get 15.6 percent and of course you can see here it's got some shield lag it's got some shield stun and again so it's only active for one frame you can see right here the purple is going to signify the the weak hit and that's pretty much up close and then the strong hit is going to be when it's kind of basically tipped from the middle of the arms up until the the tip and then it's got a disjoint also covers some good air distance and lower distance as well obviously for shorter characters and that's pretty much how f tilt works so we're going to go into the game and dive a little bit into how to actually use F-Tilt. So F-Tilt can be used in quite a lot of ways, to be honest. There's a lot of ways to use F-Tilt, but primarily the main strong points of F-Tilt are gonna be out of shield, down throw, tech chasing, jab locking, shield pressure, and shield breaking. So we're gonna start with the out of shield option since we're gonna be going over every single individual bullet point anyways. That's gonna be out of shield is what we're gonna start with. So most people, obviously the best option is going to be short hop down air, one of the best options, but it doesn't really cover behind very well. So if someone's behind you, I highly recommend just using F tilt because it comes out frame four. And even if they're in front of you, if you want like an absolute fast option you can definitely go for f tilt if you find that more comfortable or if you want to get them off stage you know you can go for f tilt as well but f tilt is definitely a really good option out of shield and that's primarily why you would want to use f tilt so the next bullet point we're going to take care of real quick is going to be jab lock and i'm not saying that you can f tilt someone and jab lock them with it but if you jab lock them f tilt is a good finisher for that because of the reason that f tilt launches far or at least farther than down air because if you get the down air which is like the main go-to it sets up another tech situation but if you want to actually take advantage of their bad recovery or something like that or you want them off stage then f tilt is definitely a good option for that because it launches them farther than what down air would so that way you can actually take advantage of you know using nikita or setting up camp on the ledge you know ledge guarding so on and so forth that's primarily why you would want to use f tilt over probably down air now another thing to go over after that is the next bullet point and we're going to dive into actually uh, tech chasing so 
If you down throw someone and they roll behind you, you could do an F tilt. If they stay still, you can F tilt. Or if they roll forward, you could run up and then F tilt. You know, whatever's going to be better for you. And that's just going to be, again, same exact thing. F tilt versus the down air. Do you want the tech chase or do you want to get them off stage and try to set up an edge guard? So it's it's up to you to make that decision on which route you want to take. Same thing if like if they end up teching the stage, let's say. Same exact thing. Do you want a down air or do you want to go for the F tilt? So again, same exact thing. So uh, that's primarily what you want to do against like jab locking versus like jab locking down air versus F tilt. And then same thing as tech chasing down air versus F tilt. Now, not only can you use F tilt to actually tech chase when they're on the ground, you can also do it if they're in the air or if you can actually read them. One thing I do want to highly mention is that when you F tilt someone in the air, sometimes the F tilt two does not connect. So your opponent has enough time to actually air dodge through you or behind you or whatever the case is to avoid F tilt two. And that's gonna, you're gonna see that sometimes. Now, most people choose the option to air dodge towards snake so they'll end up behind you and in this case that's one thing if you guys saw uh, ally versus the buzz he got the f tilt one turned around and then got the up tilt sometimes too if you get it on the ground they'll actually just roll behind you so you can get an f tilt that way or up tilt and primarily the reason i think people do that is because when you get launched off stage most people are so into like the muscle memory of just air dodging in to avoid dying so that, w that way you can get the F tilt one, turn around, and then get the up tilt for the kill instead. So that's one thing you can really go for, for another way of actually tech chasing someone. And so now we're going to be going over shield pressure. So shield pressuring with F tilt one is like a really, can be a really good thing because if your opponent is so used to you doing F tilt two, like the whole F tilt, F tilt one, and F tilt two, then they're just gonna be waiting for the F tilt two to actually be able to want to do anything after that. So if they're just sitting in shield, let's say, and you do F tilt one, and then you go for like a grab or something, then, you know, that could be very beneficial. So you can kind of just force them to sit in shield and then you can kind of go for like another, um, another grab, or you can go for like F tilt again and then cause more of a shield pressure. Some people might actually drop shield because if you do F tilt one and then you do F tilt, one and then two again then they might drop shield because they're prepared to think that you're going to do the whole f tilt the first time so they might drop shield and then you get a full f tilt anyways off of that so that's a good way to actually use uh, shield pressure for f tilt now one thing i do want to mention again in the frame data is that it's minus 22 though so if you do f tilt one they can just grab you all right and they could do other things too outside of grab if they wanted to depending on you know how their frame data is for that specific character so you do want to be mindful of that i mean i highly recommend using jab instead because jab one is only minus eight but that's me personally if you want to do f tilt one that's fine just be aware that it does have some lag behind it it's minus 22 on shield so you know again just be very careful when you're actually deciding to do f tilt one instead of jab or you know anything else in that case now second to last is going to be shield break. Now if you notice here, F tilt does a significant amount of shield pressure or sh you know, shield damage. So you can see that it takes about like half of DK shield. Now imagine if we just did something very simple as an up smash and then F tilt. That's an instant shield break. So if you wanna cause like as much shield pressure as possible, or shield damage, you could just shoot for F tilt because of how much damage it does on shield. So it's a pretty good option, especially if it's mixed something so simple as an up smash. So you can actually get more shield breaks and stuff like that off of off of using the full F tilt. So really, really good, especially like on ledge. If they if you use an up smash, they get off a ledge, and then you mix that in with the F tilt. You could definitely look into possibly getting a shield break set up, and that could lead to earlier KOs for earlier percents, obviously. And so the final thing we're going to be going over is going to be down throw. Now down throw is pretty, uh, there's a lot to go over with down tilt basically. Now there's a certain amount of characters that you can down throw and then F tilt them immediately without, without them being able to actually get out of it. And I'll go over the, the chart as well for you so you guys can take a look at it with me. But uh, basically at 126 on big, 
on like the big characters you can get eftel for free and they actually can't get out of it if you want more information on that you can always visit my smash corner that is a youtube channel they do have a full video on snakes down throw in general so you can kind of like go over that too so in this case being said you know some people you can actually jab so you can jab one and then you can actually do an eftel after that timing is pretty tight but uh it can be a true combo to if you get the timing right such as there it was a three hit combo so it's really all dependent on your timing but you can also do that too if they're at early percents so uh looking into this real quick let's see right here all right so now this is the chart now it doesn't have like the new dlc characters such as like banjo and all them but uh as far as like the new dlc characters goes it you only have to worry about banjo because it does work on banjo now, certain characters, the magic number is pretty much 126%, or, you know, if it's not stale at all, meaning you didn't use down throw that much, then it's only 124.7. All right, so if you see any of these characters highlighted, then it's going to work for them as far as uh, down throw into F tilt goes. Now, you may be seeing that some people are purple, some are halved, and I'll go over that too. So if it's purple, that means... It has to be at 141.7 or pretty much 142 for some characters. If you only if you see that they're grayed out, that means you can't do it to them at all. If they're full color, that means you could do 126. The green just means you can jab them if you wanted to. Now, some are halved, so that means if Ness is facing the left of us, the left on the screen, then you can get F till at 126. But if they're facing on the right side, it has to be 141 or pretty much 142. Uh, also here, on, like Ryu and Ken, for example, you cannot down throw F tilt them if they're facing the right side. But if they're facing the left side, then you can get down throw F tilt. All right, so I hope that kind of clears things up. The only other one to really go over is probably, probably Greninja. You cannot do it on the right side, but on the left side, you can do it at 141.7 or pretty much 142 that's how that move is going to work in general so um as far as like another situation goes like even if you have like a grenade here you can f tilt and then do something like that too that's another thing in my smash corner if you check out their video you kind of halt them with the f tilt one the grenade blows up and then you can get like the up tilt so if you are used to something like that you can also down throw them and then, you know, something like that too, if you wanted to. But that's outside of F-Tilt. But I hope that you guys actually learned something from this video. And I hope that you guys are opened up to actually using F-Tilt more and using it in other ways rather than just fully committing to the attack. But uh, otherwise, that's pretty much all I have for this video. Again, my name is Swiss. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. Again, I have Patreon, Twitch, Twitter, other social media platforms down below. Feel free to check that out. Ask me questions, etc., etc. And I'll see you guys on the next video. I know. Never duplicate you, never multiply two. Everyone copy your pace, mask all up in on their face. This infinity can't be haste. They are cool with their complaints. Uh, uh, uh. You feel it in you? Then you brush it off you. It's significant, but you got something we want. And your whole life is a taunt. Cause you will not just comply. Waking up for your day.